My name is Glory Dharmaraj. I am Director of Spiritual Formation and Mission Theology for the Women's Division of the General Board of Global Ministries, the United Methodist Church. I am born and raised in India. The older women population is increasing in India. According to one of the latest surveys, it says that there are about 60 million older women in India who are above the age of 60. It is a large number. Of course, India is a populous country with more than 1 billion people. In the case of older women, usually they take care of their grandchildren, especially when their sons or daughters go out to work. And um, a few of the older women live in a joint family situation. Whatever the case, many of the Indian women especially women above 60, do not have personal pension. There is no government social security. So there are certain problems related to aging, especially when it comes to older women. And there are harassments and abuses even when they live with their relatives. But often the women do not report that. It is not part of the culture and the culture is still a culture of silence and it's a shame culture and the women do not want to report certain abuses which go on. And then illiteracy is a major problem even though more and more women are being educated, older women in the age group above 70 are still an illiterate group. They do not have access to literacy and they do not have a notion of human rights often. So even when abuses occur, they do not recourse to uh, reporting that and um, about 90 percent of this population which is about 70 years do not take any action and then poverty is a key issue poverty lack of access to health care lack of access to clean water and being disabled people are some of the key issues which still keep the women under and these women still seek the approval of their male members even if some of them have access to their ancestral property they cannot make decision on these ancestral properties and management of wealth. Often they depend on their male members to make such decisions. And legal literacy is poor among this age group also. And uh, they do not seek uh, lawyer's help to settle their uh, disputes. What happens is it is for the welfare of the family it is the welfare of their sons and daughters and grandchildren that is paramount in their consciousness. Throughout their life, they have led a family-centered life. Family is most important for uh, the majority of women. So when they are younger, they are trying to uh, help their parents and they seek the approval of their parents, rightfully so. And when they are married, they dedicate their entire life to their husbands and their children and to their grandchildren. But when it comes to old age, there are certain factors which still determine a woman's value. For instance, 
if an older woman is without children if she is single or if she is a widow her value in the indian culture is still diminished and the self perception of these women is also low unfortunately because they buy into the cultural perception of what is prevalent uh, among the thinking of men and women what is very much needed today is the agency of the older women themselves in articulating naming their issues and then confronting the issues one way of doing is is to work with non governmental organizations and charity organizations church organizations because the older women's population is increasing and the life span is increasing and uh, they still try to supplement the financial uh, measures in a family often it is unpaid work taking care of grandchildren and taking care of sick relatives are still unpaid jobs and the culture and the government need to take this factor into consideration some of the older women go out to work in the fields and whatever they bring may or may not be sufficient in their old age to support them financially so financial independence is a key thing for the health and well-being of older women in india along with that is literacy whether it is financial literacy or legal literacy or simple literacy these are very important key factors which would enhance the well-being of older women especially women in their older age when they have dementia or alzheimers there is not much help available to them medical care geared towards women suffering from dementia and alzheimers is a must in a country like india and we hear about the growth of economy on one side at the same time the perception about women needs to be improved and this needs to start from childhood itself the self empowerment of women needs to endure throughout her life span and it should not be diminished through life changes like widowhood unexpected accidents and disasters and that requires often a network of relationships and the support of religious organizations also and often women rely on their faith their faith in god faith in religious organizations faith in their churches and friends and relatives but as they grow older sometimes these relations may not offer very solid support to them that is why it is important for non governmental organizations to help work towards a convention on the rights of older women such a right will ensure the setting up of mechanisms to monitor the status and the situation of older women and bring governments to accountability for these two key reasons 
monitoring and accountability a convention ensuring the rights of older women is a must at this part at this time in history and non governmental organizations as well as older women themselves need to play a key role in achieving this there's a beautiful prayer by rabindranath tagore a nobel prize winner and i will try to paraphrase it here where the mind is free where the head is held high where knowledge is free the lord should lead people and the nation into that heaven of freedom and i think the older women are part of this heaven of freedom for that a un convention is a must thank you